Happy Thursday, everybody. I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today is a really special day for us as a family. It's May 16th, and that means that three years ago today, exactly in 2021, we were sitting at the airport in Miami, Florida. We had our dogs with us. We had driven down in a rental car. And tomorrow, in the middle of the day, we are getting on a flight to Managua. We will be getting in in the middle of the night. And just before midnight, we will be kicking off our adventure of full-time, complete living in Nicaragua. We're going to talk about that and our adventure over the last three years, right after the bump. What a wild ride it has been. It is hard to believe it has been three years. On one hand, it's hard to believe that three years have passed, but on the other, it's actually amazing because Nicaragua feels so much like home. And just three years ago today, we were not living in Nicaragua and the United States had been our home for the last little while after we had moved back from living in Europe, which we moved to after we had lived in Central America previously. So this is on May 16th, we were at Miami airport. We have been preparing for months. My business partner, Paul, had already come down, already had our property. We had already bought a place. So if you've been following along on the looking back kind of timeline, you'll have seen that we went through a lot of a lot of processes of coming down and visiting, spending time, uh, doing a lot of shopping, bought property, did a lot of things. So we've been very involved and I've been all through because three years ago we were still in the midst of the COVID pandemic. So I had done a ton of work on getting ready for our move because we wanted to move right as the pandemic st started. So we lost about a year and a half through that process. And I was here just before the pandemic in 2019, thinking we were gonna come right back down shortly thereafter and just weren't able to make that happen. So in some ways to us, it has been more like five years that we've been involved and in the process of and essentially been mentally living down here. But three years ago today is when we were heading to the airport to get ready. And we had to bring our two dogs, Mia and Clive, who were moving with us. Clive would have found some way to get down here, but Mia has severe, severe nervous anxiety issues. And there's absolutely no way we could put her in a crate ever, let alone a crate on a plane. She could never fly. She could never be away from us in that way we ended up chartering a plane. So tomorrow, three years ago, we got a private flight out of uh, the Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport with just my wife and I, our two children, and our two dogs, and as much luggage as the plane could carry. They said, you, you got the whole plane, anything you can squeeze in, bring it down with you. It was an amazing experience. And we arrived uh, and began our journey here in Nicaragua. So if you are um, want to follow along, and I, I, I encourage you to do so, and, and I'm starting to do so, like it's really interesting for me that um, in that first year, I did not make videos every year, but I had been making videos for some time. So if you look back, and you have to do this with a search, if you go to my page on YouTube and actually go into my account and don't use the main search, but there's a search within the, the channel, you can search on the dates. I do as best as I can to put them in the format of date, month, year in the description. Sometimes it's in the title. I'm moving them out of the title and putting them into the description over time because uh, I think it just it looks better. It's easier to follow and people don't really care about the dates under normal circumstances. We put that in and so you can go back and say, okay, that 17th May 2021 and that'll get you to the episode for three years ago when we we're going to come. Of course, you can go to 2020 and see what was going on then. Over 2020, COVID in the United States, 2021, our life starting in Nicaragua. I didn't film every day. I started kind of thinking maybe I would, but it was never really my intention. And we things were so busy, as you can imagine, with moving to a new country that we didn't. We didn't do it every day. It was, it was, not, I only had about 80 followers, I think, when I came down here three years ago. It was, it was mostly, uh, and I say this all the time, it was mostly just my, my daily diary to my father to let him know, you know, what was going on. Of course, he can't travel. And so being able to see Nicaragua as we do things is like really a special way to connect with my family, um, and with my friends back home. And, and, you know, once in a while, an interesting party would, you know, or so interested party or someone that I've worked with would follow, but it was mostly friends and family from back home. And this was just my way to share my life adventure with them because I've traveled a lot and I've used the YouTube channel over a long period of time. It's always been very sporadic. But when we came down in 2021, I did make an effort of showing a lot more simply because there was a lot to show and, the, you know, days would pass and I'd be like, oh, I got to show my family the beach that we're living on, or I got to show them the, the hotel that we're at, or we got to show them like these things. So they have no idea what Nicaragua looks like, as most people don't. 
And so it started just showing the places where we were living and what we were doing so they could follow along with our lives. And so I would sometimes miss a week or two at a time. Not too often. I did get videos out on a regular basis for sure. And the audience did grow. We went from 80 to about 150 to 170 throughout that year. And that was noticeable. It was like, okay, but it was mostly still my friends and family and a few really interested people uh, were like, oh, I want to jump on and I, I want to follow this. It's like, a, you know, it's got its own vibe. And so we got a few people and Coming up on the end of that year, then we had an explosion in 2022 in about March. We had we had two big leaps, one on like January 23rd when I moved into Leon and another in March when we went and did some filming at Crito in Shenandega. And those two events really took the channel from, oh, it's just friends and family to this big thing. And we started having a purpose. And by the beginning of 2022, I've been really diligent to film every day. And I have not missed a single day since that time, knock on wood. It's been a few times that we weren't able to get uploaded in time. There's a few times that it's been lagging just a little bit. A few times that we missed the schedule and had to do it manually. Like a few things have happened. There's been blips. We've never missed a day of posting, which we're super proud of. That is an incredibly hard thing to do to post every single day uh, over a long period. Like you can do it for a week, like no big deal. But to do it as a constant life thing is extremely time consuming, extremely difficult. And we're doing a long format show that includes a lot of information. This has been a, quite a journey, but in 2021, we, I was missing a lot of stuff. It was the year I wrote my book. It was the year we moved down. We had to deal with a new business here. We had to deal with a new life here and just so many things that unfortunately we missed a lot. And I'm, I'm very sad that we did miss those because it was such a critical year of us going, oh, we're learning all these things. Now, a lot of you come and see me as someone who's been here for, you know, nine years. I have a lot of experience and I did have a bit of experience at that point. I had already lived in many places. I'd lived here previously. I'd visited here multiple times since I'd lived here. And I'd helped other people prepare to move here during that time. I've been very involved. We had offices here for years. So I've been tied to Nicaragua in a very close way for a long time. But I wasn't there. There's different things that affect you when you live here full time and you're and you're making a life here. And so that I wish I had documented even more of that journey at the time. And having missed some of that and being sad that I did is a driving factor in making sure I don't miss any more. Now, I want to have that for posterity for myself. I, f I find going back and watching these really interesting sometimes when it's a topic like this, I don't need to go watch it because it's just me talking to you guys about things. But when it's like showing stuff and, and like get doing interesting parts of our lives, it's really important for me to get to go back and watch them as well. It allows me to connect to my own history. So for those who are interested, uh, I, I encourage you to go back and either search and at the end of every episode, I'm sure you guys know we joke about it, I try to put, especially if you don't make it um, right when the show drops, which definitely come and watch the show when it first drops, that helps promote the show. But after it's been up for a little bit, we're, we're pretty diligent, but at the end, well, we go to a blank screen and we bring up four videos if you're on the right platform. Some platforms don't show it, uh, and, and those videos if the old videos exist, we link to one, two, three, and four years ago on the same date. If there isn't one for that date, we have it select it's whatever's best for you, or if it's topical, something that's in an associated topic so you can get more information. Uh, but when possible, we try to do these annual throwbacks. So if you watch tomorrow's video on the 17th, you should be able to go back and look at one year ago, two years ago, and so forth, and see where we were at that time. And the one that's really interesting, and again, it's not every day, but when you see them that are three years ago, it's an opportunity to see us starting tonight. After this episode, you'll be able to go and see this is us at the airport or, you know, staged by the airport, anxiously awaiting leaving tomorrow. And then tomorrow's episode will be us arriving in Nicaragua and then us arriving at the beach. Like it's, it's pretty cool, I think. And I haven't gone back and watched these in a long time uh, to kind of look at this in a, this is where we were three years ago today. And you can see all the things that have changed since then. So I, that's really cool. And I wanted to make sure you guys are aware of a little bit about the channel because we've, we've exploded, right? We, you, so many of you are new to the channel since so many things happened. I forget um, how much our, our audience has all come from 2023 and 2024. 2021 and 2022 were the years that we kind of got our feet under us, but very, very few of you were with us at the end of those years. 
So those of you who were like, get in the comments. I want to know when you've been around, who's been around for how long. And uh, I know I've got some people who've been around since the beginning and are just always here and, and love the channel. Um, not that those who are new don't love the channel. Like it's so awesome to have everybody here. We have such a great community. Uh, it, it really is encouraging that this has become a resource for people and a connection um, and, and hopefully an inspiration for a lot of people. So many people have told me that this inspires them to, to you know, look at Nicaragua. There's like daily content coming out of the country. They can see what the weather's like more or less every day. I don't record everything exactly one day after another. So there's a little bit of variation in, in climate or weather or whatever. Um, but you get to see places that I go and things that I do sometimes outside the country. Uh, but there's, there is a connection, um, both personally and to the country and to the travel and to, you know, the show. I think it's really unique and, uh, and you guys as an audience are super unique and very special to me. I mean, it means so much to me that so many of you are here, those that I've met and some of some that I hang out with on a regular basis. Um, many have become neighbors or semi neighbors and, uh, you know, some of us go out and get coffee in person or beer in person or, uh, travel places together. Like it, there really is this special connection. And there's so many of you that I have not met. And, and it's so cool when I'm, you know, walking through an airport in, in the States and someone grabs me or I'm, you know, I'm going out to dinner in a different city and someone comes up at dinner and just just shakes my hand and says, hey, I watch your show. It, it's been, you know, it's been fun or I really enjoy it or it's been meaningful to me in some way. It's so, it's so cool. It really is. Uh, and not an experience I was ever expecting to have. So um, I it really is hard for me to articulate just how much I appreciate um, what an awesome audience we have and what a large audience we have. Um, and for those who don't know and didn't see our stats show from about a week ago, week and a half ago, uh, we have a very small number of subscribers. This really throws you off. If you look at the subscribers, you say, oh, well, that's a solid show for sure, but that's a very small number of subscribers. And it is. And you look at other things in the country, you can find lots of things with more subscribers. And often when talking to people, they'll be like, well, how many subscribers do you have? Because that's the number that they see on a lot of things, but it's a mostly meaningful meaningless number. Neither YouTube nor anything else really cares about that. And a lot of times they're bots. It doesn't mean a ton. What does matter is the viewership numbers. And the viewership numbers are completely wildly different than the subscriber numbers. So when you look at the subscribers, you're like, this is a solid show, but we're part of a very small community. There's not that many people watching. There's some for sure. It's worth doing. Absolutely. But it's small. But when you look at the view numbers, we're so much larger than, you know, we have 7,500 subscribers on here, but we have more views than channels that are well-known household names with over a million subscribers. That's significant. That is hard to explain just how big that is, what a huge deal that is. When we go up against major commercial channels with big teams making those shows, and you put them into like vidIQ and compare them, suddenly we're getting twice, three times as many views as some of those places. And some really big channels that I know that are just famous, I compare them in those tools. And yes, they're still bigger than us, of course. But it blows my mind that quite often we look and find that there's a channel that I think is a huge channel that I really respect. They're amazing. And they're only getting maybe 20 or 30% more views than we are. We're very much nipping at the heels of some very large channels in my mind. Um, and uh, I find that very exciting. Like we really do have something special here. And that special thing is all you guys. Like, yeah, I go out and make the content every day and take the time to upload it. And Valentina's doing some of the marketing and, and uh, the thumbnails and stuff. But, you know, you guys participating and putting in the time to let other people know and link it and share it places, that stuff is so special. It really does mean a lot. So this is just a, a special episode for me today that I wanted to you share that this opportunity to kind of watch the progression of time happen uh, is coming up. So you could, so I think three years is a good amount of time where it's like now you can see how established we are and where we've ended up. And there's a there's a real ability to see progression. And if you watch the one, two, and three year ago in the same day, which I encourage you all to watch four videos per day, that would be fantastic. Um, you know, you can see okay, here's us when we first landed. Oh, here's us after a year. Look how established we were. Oh, after two years, we were super comfortable. Three years. Wow, we're like totally integrated and we're into things. Um, but it is also interesting that hitting the uh, three-year mark, we do not yet have residency. People are often like, oh, wait, but you you have to have residency to start a business. Well, no, go look at this channel. We were business people before we moved here. We weren't even here yet. When I say it's physically possible to start a business when you're not here, we did that, right? Stupid, but we did that. And do you need a business to be here? No, absolutely not. Do you need a residency to have a business? Of course not. We don't have residency, but we have a business. Like all these things that people say, oh, that can't be done. Nope, nope. Here it is. Look at years of video. Yes, the whole thing could be faked, but that would be awfully hard and quite an investment for why? 
We had no idea that people were going to come out years later and be like, oh, no, you can't do that. No, pretty, pretty clear you can. And it's been visible. Like we've been on uh, the government's radar for a long time, right? I got stopped at Border Control a long time ago. And they said, oh, we watch your show, right? We keep tabs. We like to know what's going on. And which was, you know, a really big mark of having gotten somewhere. And it's also worth noting that I've really noticed how many of our, I don't want to use this term in this way, but uh, you'll, I hope my audience will understand our competitors, right? People who are English language vloggers, who are uh, gringos or expats living in this market and making vlog content here in country that have fallen away. We had more competition, I believe, um, or very similar three years ago when I first arrived. Now, I didn't really know who the people were. There were some that were doing it before I got here, and I knew them because I was always watching Nicaragua content from a long time ago. And there's some that even before we got here, they gave up their channels. They just completely disappeared. And I was very uh, disheartened to see that because there's some channels I really like, made some amazing content, um, and they're just gone. And uh, uh, there's some that I, I didn't really like their content that much, but I got here and then, you know, found out that they were big channels in the country, them doing a lot of stuff, but they were really out just doing self-promotion. And that was why we weren't very happy with their content. That's why it was very shallow. Uh, but many of those have, you know, dropped off, whether they just post a small amount of what they used to, or in many cases, so many people, often some good ones, have just completely given up, or in some cases, just run away uh, entirely and, and pushed right up to the last second as trying to make a commercial channel and then discovering that they couldn't and disappearing. At this point, it's starting to feel like a last man standing kind of thing that there was a moment where making Nicaragua content felt like a thing that a lot of people wanted to do and people were putting an effort into. And now all these years later, I'm starting to feel like it's something that people are bailing on left and right. I think watching this channel, I'm not saying that everyone watches this channel, but of people who are watching this channel or ones that are similar, they look at it and say, oh, look, this seems, you know, this isn't that hard and this is content we could make and, and people will be interested and they don't realize how much time goes into it and that we're doing this for years and every day and it's a huge amount of work and and eventually they get disenchanted and realize they could put in years without even monetizing. Now, so, you know, I'm not in a position where I'm worried about monetization. Of course, you guys donating coffee or whatever makes a huge difference. And thank you so much. Like, I'm not worried about it, but holy cow, do I appreciate it. Um, it, it you know, I do this channel because I love it and it's a connection to you guys. Like it's really become a social thing for me, um, as you can imagine. But also from a purely financial perspective, it gives me a lot of reason to have nice cameras and computers and editing software and tools for making these videos because I enjoy doing it. I enjoy getting the microphones or trying different ones and trying different cameras and doing different angles and different editing techniques. I don't always have time to really play around with those, but it's something that I find very enjoyable. If I didn't have this show, how would I do that? Why would I do that? I wouldn't have a reason to. So this show gives me on that side, that stuff, that's kind of mechanically the fun of doing the show. And then the connecting with you guys and making the content. And of course, that the show is being successful is also a lot of fun. That's a rewarding thing on its own. But the point being that monetization was not a drive. At no point did we think that monetization on the show was going to suddenly make it like some financial success. That's a really silly pipe dream, anyone who's thinking that. But I think a lot of people were thinking that. They thought they could come up with a shtick and do a show and get lots of viewers and that it would make loads of money simply because they had a YouTube show. And then they find out that after years of doing it, and I can tell, right, because having done this, I know what it takes to get to monetization because there's very strict rules about it. And most of the shows that I see, they put in this, this flashy thing and they kind of act like they're going to be doing it as a business. And then after a long period of time, suddenly they give up all of a sudden. And I, I think, I hypothesize, I imagine in my mind that they're hitting that point where they're, they're having that conversation and saying, look at the hours we're putting in and this is costing us time and money. And there's no payoff coming. We are so far away from an uncertain first check. And let me tell you, the first time you get monetized, you know, unless something dramatic happens, you're looking at a $2 return, right? This is not like you get monetized and you're monetized well. It's, oh, we're monetized and Google's going to hold it for a year until they have an amount of money saved up that's large enough to make it worth writing the check. Like, it's absurd how little you actually make. And uh, and that's fine because that's not the goal for doing it. But if people are doing it with that goal uh, or they're try they think that they're going to use it as a marketing platform, a few, if you're doing real estate, you can make it make sense as a marketing platform. But if you're doing much of anything else, you tend to find that you drive so little traffic that you're not really making any difference for yourself financially. And so without the return on uh, monetization, meaning being meaningful in any way, 
um, it, I think it, a lot of people just give up suddenly after they've pushed really hard. Uh, or in the case of Jack Pittman, who recently in the last few months gave up his channel, which is very sad because he had an excellent channel, such a great guy. Um, and we did interviews together. Uh, I was really hopeful. He was kind of ramping up. He had been, he had done a lot of Nicaragua content in the past and then, um, took some time off, mostly because he had lost his channel for technical reasons. He got it back. Um, has he does other YouTube stuff, so he's like established YouTuber, and was coming back with like, okay, he was going to focus on doing like interviews and some cool stuff, and it really had some hope. And he talked to like two or three uh, pretty big YouTubers. We're like a little community here because we're a small place, and. Then suddenly he had a change of heart and he posted some very emotional videos about why he didn't feel it was a good use of his time or his emotional energy to be encouraging or training expats on how to move here and exposing Nicaragua to that market. And I, I totally feel him, especially after this past week, there's there's ah, just, just those, you know, dark moment of the soul for a moment where it's like, is this really something that's worth it? But we had a lot of really solid validation as well. So I, you know, came out of uh, kind of a rough week feeling very good, I think. But uh, uh, some similar things I'm sure have happened to him and it can be very draining. It can be very disheartening and, and difficult uh, to sometimes go on, uh, especially if you feel that um, either your work is not appreciated, which I certainly do not feel. I feel amazing appreciation from you guys um, and I hope you guys feel that from me as well. Uh, but also um, that that he may have not have like in encouraging people to move, he was feeling a weight of maybe maybe pushing people to move to a place uh, when they weren't going to appreciate that place or that place. It may not have been a good combination for them. And that was something that weighed very heavily on him. And he decided that he didn't want to uh, continue with that, with the effort that goes into that. He has lots of other things that he needs to do to pay his own bills, to make a positive impact. And he's such a great guy, like putting in his effort, uh, making sure that he's focused on, on po you know, really positive impacts uh, to Nicaragua and his, his local community. And, and, you know, he wants to create jobs or, or create the, the, the capability for jobs. Even if he's not a job creator, he's a job encourager uh, and, and doing some fantastic stuff out there. So, But seeing his channel disappear when he was one of the big three uh, independent vloggers, like that's 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 really rough. Um, and the number of, of people just doing this, fitting into the space, seems to be dwindling. That was a very long uh, explanation. But after the years of doing this and coming in going, wow, this is there's a gap in this market, and then finding there's a bunch of people trying it, and then again, it seems like there's a gap in the market is... Um, Surprising and interesting, uh, but you know, from our perspective, we still feel like we're just getting our feet under us. We feel like this is just getting started, and we're still on this really good growth path. And this is something that we're still excited to be doing. Like, in absolutely no way am I experiencing burnout. Uh, last week, notwithstanding, like that was a rough week, but it, we came out of it really well. And, um, and, and for those who don't follow and don't know all the, the kind of politics and drama, whatever behind the scenes, um, there is a bit, but it, there's, it, it's a lot more intricate and, and complicated. And, and I think we've, uh, uncovered a bunch of stuff. I think there's a lot of the places we're going to go, um, because this channel does so much stuff, right? We, we, we try to tackle this information. We try to expose how things work. We try to give you guys tools to help yourself discover, um, you know, how to live in Nicaragua, how to deal with uh, different agencies, what you're supposed to do, how to look for good resources, uh, what things should cost, where to go shopping, what opportunities exist, what opportunities don't exist, right? How to look out for people who are preying on you because there's so many predators going after expats in every market, but this one, uh, especially bad, all those things. We, we really do cover a lot of ground on this show. And as I keep saying, this year, 2024, uh, is going to be our year. My residency should be here very soon. I'm very confident that that's not going to be a problem. Um, with our residency, our hope is to bring you guys on more car shopping adventures and way more just total car adventures. We're hoping to have more vehicles this year uh, and use that for a lot more filming in a lot more locations and just broadening the show greatly. We're trying to get more crew for the show. There's a lot going on, and and of course some of it is going to is going to take a long time, and some of it may not come to fruition. But we still see an upward trajectory. This is something that we're just getting started and just figuring out. And I realize that YouTubers should have a much better idea of what they're doing by this point. But this was never our focus. As much as it feels like it was, many of the things that we do—the Daily Show, the long format, the rambling, the the unedited uh, whole thing—like everything that we do is so against the grain with YouTube. We're not doing anything by the book. We're not going to any of those, you know, how to be a good YouTuber uh, sites and saying let's do that. We're going and seeing it, and going that's interesting, but I don't. No, that's not what we want to do, right? And that's, none of that's bad. It's just, is it what we want to do? And we're kind of forging our own path and it's working, but it's not, 
it's not a, a, a true path. It's not a known path. We're, we're forging a new path and we're doing a good job. We're getting through the forest. We're getting through the fields, but we're hacking away foot by foot and discovering as we go what it's like. And so there's there's a lot of learning curve for us. And we didn't come into this with a game plan. So that makes it so much harder because it, it, we're just kind of organically figuring out what is good for you guys, what is good for us, and just what's happening. So that's that's kind of where we are. But what an interesting ride it has been, both doing the show for, for so many years and having it now be a thing, but also this new adventure of my family coming to Nicaragua and living here uh, for three years solid. This is where we you know, we'd lived lots of places before. We'd lived abroad, we'd lived in many countries, we'd lived in Nicaragua previously. We had never made a solid commitment to a single place where we were selling our homes and actually buying a home, not just renting, not just renting a car, but buying a car, buying a home, settling down, making as much as you can a commitment to being a permanent, long-term, solid resident member of community. Of course, we tried to integrate any place that we ever lived. We always wanted to get to know communities and get to know people and, and the culture and really, really fit in and, and understand understand places and that was part of our process of trying to find the right place but with Nicaragua this time three years ago this was a a very conscious decision this was the this is our home base we had always treated the U.S. as a home base even if we gave up our home we still would come back every year and and keep a, a storage unit and we would change out our clothing and we would drop things off pick things up and we'd always stay for a while with family when we didn't have a home or anything and and we were mentally still uh, anchored to the US, even if we weren't living there, we were anchored in such a way that we hadn't given up our major possessions and our and our really strong ties to the country. And moving to Nicaragua, we shifted, putting our anchor in Nicaragua. Yes, we're, we're big time travelers and we wanna get out there and do a lot of traveling in the future. And I want this show to to take off and do interesting new things. Like what, what we do here in the vlog, I hope is more of a beginning. Um, I'm not looking at this as, oh, we've arrived where we wanna go. I'm looking at this much more as we're, we're still in the final stages of providing a proving ground that we have have some processes and equipment and technology and experience that there's things we want to do and we're getting closer and closer to having an opportunity to do them. Uh, some of that comes from the actual vlog side, some of that comes from the personal life and, and work life sides. So we're putting those things together, but that's where we are. This is still me looking at this very much as a ramping up process, not a not a not pla uh, plateauing, not as a, a petering out, not as a uh, end uh, means or whatever. This is just uh, still sampling and, and seeing if this is going to be what we want to do. And the answer is absolutely. This has just been such a fantastic experience, both doing the vlog and living here in Nicaragua. I know that a lot of people uh, say to me, even Nicaraguans, even really close friends that I see all the time, uh, someone said to me recently, and he was pretty drunk when he said this, but he's like, but this isn't your home. This is a place you're moving on, you're passing through. That's what people do. They come here, they may stay for a while, they say this is where they live, and they move on. And uh, I think that very likely a lot of people probably think of us that way. And I'm sure Nicaraguans are incredibly used to people coming down um, when they're younger, when they're, when they're you know retirement age. Yeah, people stay quite often. But when you're younger and you're moving from country to country and you come here, you may give this impression of, oh yeah, you know, this is this is where we're living, this is what and then at some point just business or something comes up and you leave. And and could that happen, of course. But I don't think those people are very often making home and business commitments and, and integrating into communities the way that we are and, and making the kinds of strong ties into the country uh, that we're doing. It really is our intention and our thought process that this is the logical home base for us. This is the place that we've wanted to be. And after nine years of comparing places and thinking about it, this is where we ended up. So this has been a very uh, interesting journey and we've changed so much through it. Of course, we're getting older. Our kids were you know, not teenagers when we came down, they're both teenagers now. A lot of things have, have shifted uh, in our personal lives, in our age ranges, in our experience, in our uh, work lives. Things outside of our Nicaraguan experience have changed dramatically. This show is a new thing since we came down. So a tremendous amount of our lives have changed during this period. Often when you move to a new country, especially one like Nicaragua, you expect there, that to be a catalyst to a lot of things changing. That's one of the reasons I advise so heavily about people not making so much of a commitment 
to buying a house, buying a car, uh, locking yourself into a specific city or location within the country uh, when you come down because uh, my own experience is that the, the change into a place like Nicaragua is so dramatic that there's just so much opportunity for the move to Nicaragua to be the catalyst, the impetus to uh, life-changing decisions about uh, your hobbies, your free time, your life plans, your spending habits, all kinds of things. And it doesn't take very much of that changing before little things like, oh, I really just want to sit on the beach all the time, or I really want easy access to be able to go out and listen to live music, or just whatever it is that matters to you. You want to be able to make those decisions and, and come down and discover who you are in a new place as part of the adventure, it's part of the fun, and it's, and it's a great thing to shake up your life and, and have opportunities uh, to, to view yourself, your own decisions, your lifestyle from a different perspective, see it through other people's eyes, change your own perspective, and see it from that as well. Um, this has just been fantastic, and you guys have been fantastic, and this is an adventure that is just starting, so I'm, I'm so glad you're here. And tomorrow, uh, if all goes well, we have an amazing, I think, different video that we're going to be doing. I'm trying really hard uh, for tomorrow, so I have to record this ahead of time. So my projection is that tomorrow we're going to have this done, that we're actually going to bring out a, uh, a coordinated set of videos uh, of, of Drive Warp, of Nicaragua 360, and this channel all on the same day, all on the same topic, so you get three totally different um, YouTube video experiences about the same topic. It just kind of came up as an opportunity to do this, that we filmed all the right things to put this together on a day when we were doing something big and different anyway. So I'm, I'm excited about being able to do that. So tomorrow, uh, today is the three years from us. This is our last day in the United States. Tomorrow will be three years from our arrival in Nicaragua. And uh, please do go back and watch those old videos, give them a like, leave comments, help promote that old material, because as we do that, that, you know, tells YouTube, maybe you should show it to people again. Maybe it's worth seeing. Now, some of them aren't very good. That's why we haven't encouraged you to go back farther than three years. But going back about three years, even back uh, three years in a couple of weeks, where you can see kind of our prep as we got ready to travel and so forth. Um, gets really interesting and uh, so and it's three years from the actual day so the the videos that we show at the end are three years from the date that we do the episode on uh, about because we, we stagger by a week but this will be coming out actually three years from so you so if you're going to be using I know this gets confusing so today is our anniversary of leaving the U.S. tomorrow is our anniversary of getting to Nicaragua that is if you're watching these videos in real time then in a week from now, at the end of the video, because we stagger the videos by a week, the episodes at the end of the video will be the ones taking you back to that date. So a week from today, you'll get at the end of the video four videos that take you back to the one year ago. So if you go watch the ones today and tomorrow, they'll be the several days before we actually leave where you can see what's going on as we start to do things like stage by the airport or have White Castle for the first time and uh, hang out in Miami waiting for our flights. All that kind of stuff is happening. So I know it's a little bit confusing, but I think we've got great content with the throwback stuff. We've got some great content coming, especially tomorrow. I'm, I'm very excited about uh, trying to get all those episodes out to coordinate um, on that for you. And uh, boy, I just want to say thank you to everybody for, for joining us on this long rambling episode and on this total adventure. Um, I, and, and I, you know, get down those comments. I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear you say hi. I want to know what you like, what you don't like. And, and where should we be going, right? Lots of ideas. I want to hear things that, that you guys want to see not just around the country, just where does the vlog go? Where, do, where, How do we keep it fresh and interesting and exciting? And I know that simply doing this every day, the act of having a daily vlog makes this increasingly special as very, uh, very few vlogs ever even attempt anything like this. Very few sustain it for any length of time. So quite literally every day that we have another video comes out is another whole echelon of, of daily vlogs that fall away um, from, from ever having sustained for that long. And so we're, we're rapidly moving into an incredibly small pool of continuous daily vlog, uh, category. Um, and that, that makes us special 
on its own. And we've also noticed the number of vlogs failing in this market, uh, which I mentioned that we're just, there's a number of things are happening that I think YouTube is very stressful. A lot of people had, especially right after the pandemic, um, so many people were like, this is a way for me to do things and keep myself interested when I'm at home. And I'm not one of those people. I was doing it before the pandemic. I always enjoyed this stuff. It, it, the pandemic probably pushed me towards a few things, but that's not when I did this. I did this just after. And uh, those people who did it during the pandemic, thinking it was going to be a revenue source, thinking it was a way to get out from their normal job, thinking it was going to be some panacea for them. Well, they're now discovering that it is not at all. And they're going to uh, they're going to all be disappearing pretty rapidly, as as we've seen. So. Thank you so much for coming along on this journey. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, if you would like, subscribe, uh, post a link on social media, tell friends and family about the show. Make sure to watch the videos at the end, uh, anything you can to promote the show. I know that some of you are out there all the time sending this to, to groups of people saying, hey, this is this is an interesting episode. You got to check this out. Follow this guy. Uh, that stuff makes all the difference. That is how people find out about us. So thank you so much. I will see all of you for our special day with coordinated events across all of our ch our three main channels. And if you have not subscribed to Nicaragua 360 and Drive Warp along with this one, please do so. Uh, we want to get those channels a lot more visibility as well. So I will see all of you tomorrow. And now is that special opportunity. Four videos up on the screen. Click on one probably the one from 2021, three years ago, that one is going to give you that, that cool kind of prep to get ready for the content coming about our three-year anniversary.